I would now like to invite our final speaker, Phil Brown of the Brown University Children's Center, to present. His presentation is entitled, Hospitals for a Healthy Environment. Phil? Hi. I'd like to talk about our efforts to build a statewide coalition which works uh, with other national coalitions and other statewide coalitions. The origins for this really was that one of our science projects involved uh, phthalates as a uh, contaminant and we were aware that the neonatal intensive care unit at Women and Infants Hospital, which is the main uh, clinical site for our work, had gone uh, DEHP and uh, PVC free. And it was the work of one person, really, the nurse manager, Beth Taub. And she had read an article in a nursing journal about the potential health risks of PVC and DEHP, which were used very widely in uh, tubing. Uh, and many of these neonates were being exposed to it. So she found very quickly that they could, without much effort, get similar products, uh, usually for not any additional cost. And it was just a wonderful, wonderful effort on her part. And we thought we would uh, develop that and work with the whole hospital to go phthalate-free uh, and PVC to the extent as possible. Um, more background for this is that uh, we're plugged into an understanding that there is a, a great amount of environmental uh, footprint of the healthcare industry. And, uh, while healthcare is 17% of the U.S. GDP and a huge workforce, uh, it's a workforce and set of institutions that work through uh, power outages, natural disasters, and emergencies, and uh, don't always think about all the waste that might be produced. But if you look at this slide, you see how much energy is being used, uh, how many gallons of water are being used, how many pounds of waste. Uh, are being produced by the hospitals. So it's a very extensive environmental footprint and a lot of people, uh, such as you heard from uh, the prior talk, like Healthcare Without Harm, have taken this up as a very major concern. Uh, particularly from a uh, viewpoint of toxic chemicals, there are lots of them in healthcare and Physicians for Social Responsibility, the American Nurses Association and Healthcare Without Harm released a very uh, important report on this, hazardous chemicals in healthcare. And you see from this list that there are a lot of very dangerous substances that people are subject to every day. So a, a growing concern for the idea of getting the healthcare sector cleaner and greener. So as I say, our original goal was to expand to the entire hospital. And we thought that uh, this would be a very great accomplishment. And we sat down with our community advisory board at one of the very first meetings of that board, and they said, you know what, it's a small state, we all know each other here in Rhode Island, make this into a statewide effort. You've only got a little bit over a dozen hospitals, so do something bigger. And we took their advice and we formed hospitals for a healthy environment in Rhode Island, and only three months later we held our first conference. We modeled ourselves after another group in Maryland, and here are our pioneers and role models. Barbara Sattler and her colleagues had put together in another slightly larger, but also a small state, a great statewide coalition, very nurse-driven, by the way. Uh, Gary Cohn, uh, one of the founders of Healthcare Without Harm, and Janet Brown, the leader of Practice Green Health, were also our role models. And these are people who had had a statewide, a national, and even international presence in this area. So we put together this coalition. We had hospitals, hospital associations, professional associations, nursing schools, unions, universities, government agencies, food groups, environmental organizations. And the idea was just generally to make uh, a more sustainable green healthcare system. So in the short period of time that we've existed, we were able to form this coalition uh, to run two conferences, to have meetings uh, originally bi-monthly, now often monthly. Um, we've represented this organization at the National Clean Med Conference and at the Maryland Hospitals for Healthy Environment Conference. We've done a lot of outreach and education. We've worked with um, eco checklists to help hospitals figure out what is their footprint. And we've done presentations. Uh, here you see a list of the components, the coalition members. We've got a lot of the ho hospitals. Uh, we have unions, we have professional and hospital associations, a number of nonprofit organizations, state and federal agencies, and universities. 
And we were very, very pleased to see how quickly a lot of organizations and agencies and individuals jumped on to this project because it was something that people were just, you know, waiting around to see. Uh, many of the hospitals had done little projects on their own but had not put it all together. So as I say, in a very short time, we put together uh, a full-day conference for this in 2011, and uh, some of our guest speakers, our main speakers, were Gary Cohn from Healthcare Without Harm and Barbara Sattler, who I've mentioned. Uh, we had a welcome introduction from one of our state representatives, and we had speakers from all the different organizations around the country and the institutions around the state who were doing work in this field. And we found a lot of interest, particularly in food, and Farm Fresh Rhode Island was a, a very important player in this also because they've been working to get healthy local foods into hospitals and other institutions. But we found a lot of these hospitals had done a little bit on their own but didn't know what someone else was doing, and they just gravitated very quickly to a statewide coalition. We were very happy that 80 people came to this with only a few months of planning. And one of the people who had been working almost on her own uh, in the Miriam Hospital, Monica Anderson, was as a result of this um, appointed as a sustainability to coordinator. And uh, it meant that the hospital took much more seriously that she had a major role and that the hospital itself had a major commitment in this area. Um, the next year we again had a conference and we had uh, 100 people attended and we had uh, again speakers both nationally and locally um, and we included there um, somebody from Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center in Boston who had herself been appointed as a hospital-wide coordinator. And we looked at ways to measure sustainability. We looked a lot at sugar-sweetened beverages, medical waste management, sustainable landscaping and composting, healthier green cleaning products, um, how to develop a sustainability committee and develop a sustainability plan. Uh, we vary our meetings now in between this um, at the Hospital Association of Rhode Island and the member hospitals, and they often give hands-on tours of what they're doing. Uh, and this is just a list of some of the topics that we talk about at these meetings. And everybody is very, very proud to show the work that they're doing. Um, as I say, we got involved in the Sugar Sweetened Beverage campaign because uh, that was a very big issue as the state debated whether there should be an excise tax for sugar sweetened beverages, and a lot of healthcare providers started to uh, get concerned about this. So we uh, were partners in that. And we had workshops uh, with panelists from around the country who were working on obesity and food policy um, and worked a lot with our state health department. And we brought to our conference actually a healthy vending machine from a company that was trying to get these into hospitals and our local. Um, food partners, uh, the Real Foods First group, helped to pick out the snacks that would be there. And we were able to meet with the state attorney general as well to uh, get on board with a more statewide approach. Uh, blue wrap recycling became very important. Hospitals were very clear that uh, there was a huge amount of waste from the blue wrap used to, to wrap sterile instruments. And starting with Miriam Hospital, uh, they donated a lot of this for a class, and we had a whole class of Rhode Island School of Design students figuring out ways to use this creatively. And you see photographs here of the Halloween costumes. And we had a whole fashion show involving Groundwork Providence and the Miriam Hospital. We began to work a lot with pharmaceutical waste management because that's a very big issue. So many uh, of these uh, pharmaceuticals are dumped, and we, we increasingly find uh, very high levels of endocrine disrupting chemicals from pharmaceutical waste in our drinking water. And we were able to uh, supervise an MA thesis on this that helped to identify state policies and legislations and are actually working with a startup company that's trying to uh, do chemotherapy home diversion. Uh, we spend a lot of our time going around to hospitals, meeting with them, doing presentations, helping them to establish green teams. Um, we work on Earth Day celebrations and other things of that sort. We bring in local community groups who are nearby the hospitals. Uh, many hospitals have community benefits coordinators, and they're interested in spreading out that way as well. So these are some of the services that we provide. Uh, we help hospitals to establish green teams, develop sustainability plans. We make presentations to them. We help them do audits. We uh, help them write case studies. We started uh, a blog of sustainable practices in the state's hospitals. 
And this is just a list of some of the blog features that we've already done or are about to do. And they include things as varied as Farm Fresh Rhode Island bringing in veggie boxes uh, to hospitals for healthy snacks that people can buy and other ways of, of spreading the DEHP-free approach. One of the things we're doing now, um, coming up uh, very shortly next month, is the Blue Wrap Blue Jean Bowl, when we're taking uh, to a, a higher level this whole idea of recycling the Blue Wrap. And we're using this uh, as a way also to give statewide uh, efforts um, to bring people to the National Conference, Clean Med, which is the national gathering of everybody who works in hospital sustainability. And that's going to be uh, happening in the spring in Boston. So this is a uh, a wonderful way to build support for that and to get financial support so that every hospital in the state of Rhode Island can send at least one of its members uh, to participate in the Clean Med Conference. And as you see, there are going to be some very, very important speakers. Uh, Don Berwick, who is the past director of Medicaid and Medicare, and uh, Bill McKibben, um, who is the climate change leader. So our goals are to educate, inspire, um, provide resources, um, make connections between people and groups. And what we really want to do is to help build a national network and make connections with other children's centers, utilize connections with the PESUs, collaborate with national groups like March of Dimes, uh, and hold meetings for all these efforts at our national gatherings, we, which we did at the uh, 2012 joint meeting with uh, Partnerships in Environmental Public Health. And we hope to share resources across the children's centers and provide training for undergrads, grads, and um, nursing students. So we hope that that intrigues you and interests you out there in doing more of the similar work and I invite you to visit our website. Thank you.